Good morning, folks. We'll begin with a review of the recent Polar Vortex video we've released. The Earthwind map is not yet one year old, and we've not seen a full cycle on our upper atmospheric flows, but we're starting to now. We first saw a powerful northern vortex at the top of the stratosphere, but no discernible flow to the south. This is not a constant thing. During the colder months of the year, we see the vortex at that pole. So it has been in the north, but as we cross the equinox and the southern hemisphere begins to cool, the southern hemisphere gains the vortex. While the northern flow is still visible, it is weakening tremendously and will be as weak looking as the south did by the time the solstice rolls around. Vortex in the winter, torch passed between hemispheres at the equinox. Anyway, coming to the latest from Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio, an animation zoomed into the Congo showing how drought could affect the region in terms of vegetation going forward. Head over to NASA's SVS page for a full explanation and to download the video yourself. Our top shot of the day comes from NASA's Earth Observatory, showing a dust cloud in China moving across the land. These photos were taken only two hours apart. Tropical development? We're still monitoring the systems in Indonesia north of Australia and those affecting the Solomon Islands. Right now, they're mainly a rain event. Despite the lack of major tropical development, the rest of the world's weather is getting a bit worse today. That convergence line off South America was stolen by that double O system offshore, will become the major flood threat at the coastline today. In Europe, that line cresting the west is a complement to the system that managed to flood the eastern bloc before leaving and dropping hail all the way up to the Netherlands. Same flow is enhanced today. In the US, the low of focus continues coming eastward, and by tonight, the severe watch will arrive at the east coast. We still have snow warnings to the north and out west as well. Of course, the real story of the day began last night, just as April 24th became April 25th UTC. Boom! A few hours ago, one of those big sunspots we watched silently trek across the earth-facing disk, waited until the limb turned and fired. As of this morning, we can definitively state that the CME cloud itself will not have a kinetic interaction with Earth. The coronal mass ejection was of significant size but is headed away from Earth. NASA's endless spiral confirms it was a backside eruption. Now, even with Earth's connection on the limb now, if you caught last night's upload, you know it jumped over here last night from well behind the limb. We indeed took a slight bump in polar protons, but the real snap may have been the jump in connectivity. The flare itself measured X1.3. The radio blackout created last night has ended as cool blues underneath local noon contrast the red Pacific blackout we showed last night. And if you'd have said we'd take an X flare, I would have indeed bet my bottom dollar it would have come from those departed active regions, as has been prevalent since I started this obsession years ago. In terms of the solar wind, the density blip we pointed out indeed was likely a density shock of the coronal hole stream, as speed is slowly ticking up through the 400 level, but this is significantly weak, causing only KP3 and no instability with the electron flux recovering from a slight stumble to charge right back higher. The coronal holes are indeed still facing Earth and Mercury conjoins the Sun in just hours, but the power of the coronal hole has remained minor to moderate. We had the 6.6 .6 in Canada and a 5.9 in Fiji, bigger than anything in the previous five days, but the uptick has proved as moderate as the coronal hole power. Got a couple of shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.